Alright, hello guys, it's Feeding Frenzy 91 and this is my Wii U review. So I've owned this system for a couple weeks now, so I think it's about time to review it. I'm gonna split the review into four different categories. One, online. Two, um whether uh, um, the games. Three, what like the system has to offer that's different from everybody else. And four, I'm gonna talk about the accessories, mostly the touchpad. Alright, let's start with the online. But first You'll be seeing three Wii U games. All these games are Wii U. One will be Need for Speed. One will be Splinter Cell. One will be Nintendo Land. Okay. All right. Now let's start with online. Now I'm going to be honest. I was surprised when I first started. The first game I played was Need for Speed Online. And I was just, what I was shocked was that Need for Speed is a racing game. And I'm used to, in racing games, getting lag because, you know, racing games are really fast paced. So you get lag when you're online and you're in the middle of the race. You get lag. It happens in even though GTA isn't a racing game, it happens in GTA when you do the races. It happens in other games, but I'm playing this game and I'm getting like no lag at all in this Need for Speed racing game. Now, I don't know whether that's because EA has improved their servers or whether because the Wii U's online is improved. Is improved. Um, not, not the online interactions, but whether the actual service, online service, like the speed, if it's improved from the F4360. I don't know if that's the case. But I'd experienced no lag, which I was pretty glad for, because I was expecting lag in a racing game. I mean, it's a racing game. It's really fast-paced. Anyway, all, all, all other than that, um, the online doesn't really have as much to... I'll, I'll be honest. It doesn't have as much to offer as the Xbox and the PS3 do. Like, it doesn't have all the apps, all the free movies, all the services, all the stuff that you enjoy outside of playing games like when it comes to games they're basically the online i can't really find a difference other than that i experience no lag and need for speed the online is the same you go online you go to multiplayer you pick you know you go to those well with need for speed you go to the open world you go to a meetup and then you get to a race or uh where, or you try to break up the other person's car you know so other than that nothing no difference really in the online i haven't tried wii u chat yet because i don't really have any much people to talk to but I don't know whether that is like party chat in the Xbox 360. I doubt it, but I don't know. So when I do know, I'll let y'all know. Um, other than that, the online is basically the same. I mean, YouTube is great on it. YouTube, being able... Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that when I have the touchpad, but YouTube is pretty good on it and stuff like that. Stu I haven't used Hulu because Hulu isn't really available in my country. Um, it tends to be only really in the U.S., but other than that, let's go to um, the next topic, which is the games. The games are great. Need for Speed and Player Cell, they're both third-party games, okay? So I guess I can't exactly review the Wii U based on those games. But playing them on the Wii U is pretty good. Need for Speed is looks nice. You know, the cars have more, I don't know, the difference. I, don't, I didn't buy the Xbox 360 version, but to me it looks better than the other Need for Speed. Like Carbon in them, maybe. It looks better than that. And um, Splinter Cell looks really crisp. Looks really like the suits and everything. They look really great. And yeah, but um, the the I guess the only game that I really should use is Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land is really fun, and it really takes advantage of the second screen, which I will get to more on the touchpad. So let's move on. The games are really fun. I actually downloaded three free games because they have some three free games on there too. Just like Xbox and PS3, which is good, so I'll test those out too eventually. Maybe give a review on them. Alright, so other than that, let's go to what the difference is between the other systems. Obviously the touchpad, but I'm going to talk about that later. But another difference is I really like how the Wii U interacts with the TV. How you're able to um, use it as a remote, or how you're able to really, um, like if you did use it, you could actually, they have this thing called Nintendo TV, which is where you have the... Wii U, where you can like search, and then the, um, you can search for certain shows and stuff, and then like the Wii will be like if you have it on. Now I can't use that feature because I don't live in the states. It acts my cable provider, and they're like, I'm like I don't have a cable provider that it was on the list because I don't live in the states. I live in the Bahamas. So other than that, it's still a nice feature to have. The internet, the fact that I can go on sports because I, I am a football fan. They have this thing where you can just go on the sports and you can see all the scores and everything. And, you know, they have all the matchups and everything for the upcoming stuff. So it's pretty good. All right. Let's go to the main feature right now, the touchpad. All right. While I talk about the touchpads in games, I'm going to have the game show up 
in the screen so maybe y'all could like get what I'm talking about. Alright, the touchpad is actually, or the touch screen is actually, it does feel nice in your hands. Certain games, it doesn't seem to add anything. Other games, it does. Let's just start with Need for Speed. Need for Speed, you can see the map on the touchpad, which isn't bad. It's not bad that I don't have to press stop, start, and look at the map. And I can just look down and look at the touchpad, or the touchscreen. Now, also, I can, if I wanted to, play co-op mode that way. It's called father-son mode. It's where you, um, one person has the touchscreen, and they can, like, distract the cops. They can t change it from day to night, change the weather, change a lot of things, get traffic off the road, change the traffic lights. Other than that, like, um, there's nothing really the touchpad does that is too significant. The map is pretty good, but that's not really significant. Because I can just press start and go to the map. But it is a help, but at the same time, it's not much of a change. Alright. Other than that, my... With, um, Splinter Cell, the touch screen is, like, bittersweet. Let me explain it. It's because of the way you play Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell is a, is a stealth game. Okay, but things are going on all around you, and you have to hurry up. Sometimes someone is coming up to you, and you have to hurry up, switch your weapon, and take them out. Right? The problem is, Splinter Cell now has this weapon wheel, which actually I don't agree with. It's a weapon wheel now, where you like go to the weapon wheel and you pick your weapon from the weapon wheel. Right? So it takes a bit to get to the weapon you want sometimes, unless you know exactly where it is on the wheel. However, when you play with the touch screen. All the weapons are right in front of you on the touchscreen. While you're playing, all the weapons are right there, and you can literally just p touch a weapon, touch a gadget, touch a special type of goggle, touch anything basically, and it's just there, right? So that actually helps with that regard. It makes it a lot easier to switch weapons. Now, the problem with the gamepad is that it's a little too big, and the way it is set up is not the best for a stealth game. A game where you have to move around with both joysticks, it would be probably better to use the pro controller than the touch screen. It'd probably feel better with a game like Splinter Cell. Even though, I am honest, I am so halfway in between this because that touchpad is just so great. Being able to just touch my weapon, there it is, there, I got this weapon, I got this weapon. That touchpad for the game is greatness, but it just doesn't feel right playing it on a Splinter Cell game. It just doesn't. Alright, now that we got that out of the way. Um, Nintendo Land is the only real game I have that really takes advantage of the touch screen. Every single game you play on that takes advantage of it in such a unique way, a way that you wouldn't think like they would do, which is really nice. Like the person on the touch screen will usually see completely different than what the people on the using controllers or Wiimotes will see. Like with Fine Mario, the person on the touch screen sees it from an overhead view. And I was actually like, how could how is this hard? Y'all can find me because y'all see it from overhead. And then I look up at my TV screen and I realize that, no, they don't see it from overhead. They see it from third-person view. So even though I see it from overhead, they see it from third-person. So it's really nice. And then same thing with um, the other types of games. They have this one where they're collecting fruit. And I can once again see it from overhead. I'm controlling two people, which is very... It was actually really comfortable with, with those two joysticks on the gamepad. I'm controlling two people and I'm trying to catch them while they catch the fruit. Now, these games are simple, yes, but they're pretty fun. I'm really enjoying the Pigman game on the Nintendo Land, which is where you just control, where the person on the touch screen, they control um, Captain Olimar, with, which, who has a bunch of Pigmen, and the other people are just Pigmen, so they help you fight. And it's pretty good, it's co-op adventure, very nice. Other than that, the touch screen, really, you forget, like playing Xbox 360 and them, you forget how much times you have to type a name in. And with the touch screen, it's so much easier, because like, when I go into Need for Speed, I gotta sign into my origin account. When I go into Splinter Cell, I gotta sign into U, the Uplay account. When I, whenever something in the game needs me to be like, is like, what's the password? You can just use the touch screen, which is actually a lot more convenient. Once again, it's not a huge deal, but it's more convenient. I also like how the touch screen um, is used when you're on the dashboard. How it's so much easier than like navigating with the controller. It, it, it just is. And also with the touch screen, I do like how using it as a remote for my television, it's very nice. And I can use it as both for both my television and cable box at the same time. Makes it easier than having to switch between like two or three remotes. Now I could just get a universal remote too, but once again, it's just something that it adds, but it doesn't focus on, which is why I'm glad. 
all right, let me just wrap this up. I guess it's uh, gone past about 10 minutes now. So the uh, overall, I'm really enjoying my Wii U. The controls, the gamepad control actually works really well when it is used, when people, when companies use the second screen for something that actually makes sense. But other than that, the Pro Controller is light, and they say it has about 80 hours of battery life in it. So get those Pro Controllers, and you're good. If you're if you're like um, a gamer that doesn't like the gamepad, get those, and you got the Wii U. Get the Pro Controllers, you're good. The only difference is, between the Xbox 360 and the Pro Controllers, basically, is where the buttons are, and that this, the right joystick is not on the bottom. That's the only difference. So, it's pretty similar. You can play Black Ops, play all those good games, like just regular, with the Pro Controller. Other than that, thank you for watching this review review. If I were to give it 9 out of 10, if I were to give it um, out of 10, I would give it about an 8 out of 10 for consoles, because... The gamepad is not at this moment with most games being used properly. That second screen is really not being used like it should. Now, for those companies that do have it used like it should, I have kudos to them, like Capcom and actually Ubisoft with Splinter Cell. But other companies who just basically just have it as just a con basic controller, then it doesn't make much sense. But anyway, so I'd give it about an 8 out of 10 for the Wii U. And I'm really enjoying it, really liking it. If y'all are considering buying one, then that's fun. that'd be great. Y'all, if y'all, if any of y'all out there have a Wii U, you can just add me. My name will be the same as it is on my YouTube page. Y'all can add me, and I'll maybe we can play together. Whatever games y'all have. Other than that, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and God bless.